Hey there. Today I want to talk to you about referential integrity. If you're at all interested in working with databases, referential integrity is one of the essential concepts that you really need to understand. It's not really difficult, but it is at the heart of relational database theory. Now today I'm going to be demonstrating this with a Microsoft Access database with a couple of tables and a query that we'll look at. Microsoft Access is actually a pretty good training ground when you're first starting to learn about databases. It's user friendly and it's widely available through Office 365. Referential integrity is a mainstay in other database systems including SQL Server and MySQL and Oracle but Microsoft Access is a good place to get started. Let's say that you have a small library that you want to catalog, maybe in your home or office. Probably consists mostly of books and periodicals, but you might have some multimedia. Now, you could put everything in one giant spreadsheet, but you'll be repeating information a lot, like author names and such. Repetition is a problem when organizing data because every time you repeat a piece of information, two things happen. It takes up more space and it risks being repeated incorrectly. That's why relational databases like Access and SQL Server break information down into subject tables like the ones that you see here. That means that information can be stored once and only once and referenced as needed so that it stays consistent and doesn't take up any more space than necessary. Now when you're building a library database, perhaps the first tables that you might create are for authors and their published works, whether that's books or multimedia or whatever. So let's take a look at those tables first. First we have the authors. I'll open that in design view here and you can see that it contains fields for most of the things you'd expect to see for an author in a library database the name primary genre the year they were born and perhaps died where they're located and maybe some contact information as well now access is a relational database system and the reason it's called this is because data is grouped into tables which are also called relations and every field within the table is supposed to relate to the subject of the table in this case authors that subject is also referred to as an entity within the database looking at the table design here you can see that the first field defined is the author ID this is what's called the primary key for the table you can see the little key symbol there and if we right click on it you can see that it's actually set to the primary key the primary key is a field or a combination of fields that serves to identify each record within the database so that it can be referred to by other tables and if we look at the actual data you can see that each row has a separate and unique value for that field. In this case it's a sequential number and Access actually provides a data type called auto number that will supply that sequential number for each new row that's entered into the table. The data type is the setting that determines how a specific field is going to be represented and treated within a database. It can be in this case an auto number, it can be text, it can be a, a regular number, access as a hyperlink data type. That determines the rules that are going to be applied to the data. So let's go ahead and close this table and let's look at the second table which is published works. Go ahead and go into design view and you can see that this table also has its primary key called work ID which is also an auto number but it also has another field called author and that's set to number so let's take a look at the actual data here and you can see that we have a number of books listed like Harry Potter and Along Came a Spider and it has mostly the data that you would expect except under author it has a number and if we look back at the authors table we can see that each one of those numbers corresponds to one of the numbers in the authors table in this case 
Number four is J.K. Rowling. Let's get these lined up. Yes, number four would be J.K. Rowling, who did the Harry Potter series, of course. Uh, number one is James Patterson for Along Came a Spider, and so on. So that's how relational databases group data together and refer to that data between tables. You can have that primary key in one table, which is referenced by another table as a foreign key. Now in the foreign key field here in published works, you'll notice that they're not unique. You have some of the values repeated and that's okay because you're going to have more than one book for each author. That's referred to as a one-to-many relationship in database terms. And this is how it's represented within the database. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, gosh, it's really complicated to remember these numbers for each author, but you don't. You don't have to. The fact is that the, the database will actually handle this for you when you design the forms and reports, as you'll see later. Now, this is where referential integrity starts to come into play because each one of these records in published works needs to reference an existing record in authors. You wouldn't want one of these records to say, for example, 5 or 10 because those primary key values don't exist in the author's table. If one of these records referenced a non-existent record in, in authors, that would be referred to as an orphaned record because these two tables have what's called a parent-child relationship with the authors being parent and the published works being child, having inherited the primary key values. So these values in the foreign key need to correspond to values within authors. So let me go ahead and close down these tables. Let's go to database tools and relationships. Now the relationships window in access shows the relationships that have been defined between tables within the database. And here we see the authors and the published works tables and there's already a relationship defined between them. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this so I can show you how to actually create one. I'm going to say yes. Okay, so now that relationship is gone. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here to authors. I'm going to drag the author ID over to the corresponding field in published works. And it opens up the edit relationships window. So you can see that right here it has the authors table and the published works table. It has the two fields that I'm drawing the relationship on. And actually, you could draw a relationship on multiple fields if you wanted to. You could have multiple fields in each table, a composite key, which is what that's called. And I'm going to say enforce referential integrity. And what that option is going to do is to prevent any changes that would create orphaned records in the published works table. And I'm also going to say join type. And in this case, I'm going to define the direction or the standard, the default direction of the relationship. I'm going to say show all records from authors and only those records from published works where the join fields are equal. So it's going to prioritize authors. I could also prioritize published works if I wanted to. But let's just say OK. And you can see that referential integrity is activated. You can also see two other settings here, which I'll get into in a second. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and create this relationship. And you can see that it's created the join line between the two tables. So that relationship is enforced and referential integrity is active. So let me go ahead and open the authors table. And I'm going to take James Michener's record and I'm going to say delete record. 
And now I get a, an error message. It says the record cannot be deleted or changed because of the table publisher works includes related records. So that prevents me from deleting any parent record in authors that would create orphan records in published works. Now let's try something else. Let's close this, go to published works, and let's change this to 10. You cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in table authors. So that prevents that change because it would be invalid. So you can see how referential integrity protects your data by preventing you from making any changes that would create inconsistencies. So let's close this down and it's can't save this record at this time and that's right okay so let's go and take a look at this relationship again we're going to right click in the line edit relationship and let's look at these two options cascade update and cascade delete are two settings related to referential integrity now what cascade update will do is to update the foreign key in the child table if the parent value is updated. So let's say that I was using the author email address as a primary key, which could be possible. It's usually going to be unique. And if that author's email changed, that means that the primary key would change. Let's take a look at the author's table again real quick. So if I defined this as this field as the primary key. Of course, right now I don't have any data in it, and a primary key cannot be null. But if that changed, then the foreign key within the published works table would also have to change. That's what cascade update actually does. Cascade delete, as you see here, would actually delete any child records if the parent record is deleted. So let's go ahead and activate that. Cascade delete could not lock table authors because it's already open. Let's cancel that. And let's try that again. Okay, so cascade delete is active now. Let's go to authors. Let's delete and let's make sure the ones we have. One, two, three, and four. That's fine. Let's go to authors and say, let's say we're going to delete James Patterson. Relationships that specify cascading deletes are about to cause one record in this table along with related records and related tables to be deleted. So it gives you a warning. Access actually warns you if you're going to cascade delete records. So that's pretty good. I'm going to say no. It's going to put it right back in there. And that's how cascade delete works. Now maybe you're thinking, okay, well that's that's all very nice, but what does that really mean in the real world? How, how does that relate to my use of the data? Well, let's take a look at another feature that Microsoft Access has. We'll close down the relationships table. Let's look at queries. Now queries are components within a database that actually provide instructions on how to pull data and format it for use. So let's open up this query in design view. Access provides a very nice query by example interface which allows you to select specific fields within tables and and tell access exactly how you want them displayed so these two tables have already been put in here the query designer has already recognized the relationship that's present and a few of the fields have actually been selected you see we have the title publish date publisher name and we've combined a couple of fields for first name and last name into one. 
And let's go ahead and run that real quick. You have view and you have run. We're just going to say view. And you can see that it's actually provided a very nice view of the data that's formatted in a way that could actually be used in a report. Now it's pulling data from two different tables and it's pulling them based on the relationship. You have the title of the book, you have the year it was published, that's in one table. Then you have the author information which is pulled from another table. Now James Michener shows up twice but his author record only shows up once in the author's table but his name can be used as many times as needed and it's always going to be correct because it's just being referenced. And of course then you have the publisher name too so that data is ready to use. That provides the information that you might need and it can be sorted in various ways. Back in the design view you can see that access has a sort row for the query instructions and you can set that either to ascending or descending. You can change the column that it's sorted on. You can do a lot of interesting things in access queries and in the queries provided by other database systems like SQL Server. So what does this mean for you? Well now that you understand referential integrity now you're better able to use database tools like Microsoft Access so that you can organize large amounts of information and break it down the way that you need it and report on it, generate the reports that you need. That's a very valuable skill in business. And it really starts with being able to analyze the type of data that you're working with, identify the various entities within it, such as you see here, authors and published works, and decide what the relationships between them need to be. Now this might be some other type of database such as a parts database. It doesn't really matter. Once you learn how to work with that information and organize it and lay it out in a tool like Access. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. You can also find more information on my site at camosoftware.com. Have a great day.